My story starts with um, working as a rec therapist within Vancouver Coastal Health and I was uh, working in tertiary at the time so with people with very complex um, mental health and addiction issues um, and I showed up it was March 17th and it was St. Patrick's Day and I showed up for my um, work and I was hoping that it was going to be a great day we had festivities planned for St. Patrick's Day and I unfortunately it didn't end up being <laughs> a great day it was probably one of the worst days of my life because I was very violently assaulted I almost lost my life that happened March 2012 I am just transitioning back to work now. Um, so the impact was just insurmountable. It was just absolute insanity. I was already having to uh, be a caregiver to a very um, ill daughter with mental health and addiction issues. So for, for me, recovery, it was very slow because, um, because I was so broken, I could no longer support um, a broken family. You know, and I think, I, I think we all need to challenge, to make changes, you need to challenge how you present. And we're not very good at that. People don't like to be challenged. Systems don't like to be challenged. They, they become very complacent. So if I present that I am shutting somebody down and not listening, and I am stressed, and I am busy, then ultimately the person who I'm working with will mirror that. But it takes working in collaboration and actually wanting to work in collaboration for change to happen. It takes for the leaders to want to talk and to the frontline staff and allow the frontline staff to be open and honest about what they see need to be to, to be implemented and changed and then for the leaders to say okay this is what needs to happen. In January of 2013, I was diagnosed with severe PTSD following what I later learned was an accumulation of stress and um, it built up to a significant night shift on December 25th, Christmas night, where I lost six patients in one night and um, found myself unable to work after that. I didn't know what was wrong with me. And I kept asking the question, what is wrong with me? Why can't I shake it off this time? Why can't I cope with this? And when I got home, uh, a good friend of mine who was actually working on the street as a paramedic could hear me on the radio and he knew what was going on. And he came to my house and he said to me, you need to book off for tomorrow. And I said, oh, okay. So I did. And then he says, okay, now you need to phone your doctor. And I said, oh, okay, because I was completely incapable of making any decisions. I was just sobbing. I was in pure crisis mode, I think, at that time. So if it wasn't for that friend who actually pushed me in the direction of what I had to do step by step, I'm not sure how that first few days would have gone. But um, luckily, WorkSafe BC was really good to me. I do think that things were starting to build up, and I wasn't recognizing it until after, and not even after I fell apart, it more after I did a lot of the treatment that I realized that those things were contributing. Some of those things were um, traumas in my personal life, you know, accidents at my home, losses in my family. Um, even relationships were a bit of a problem. I had a, a belief that it wasn't safe to be upset by a call because of a relationship I was in. And so I taught myself 
that I needed to be bulletproof and I needed to not feel these things so that when I did have an electrocution call that really bothered me, I didn't know what to do with those emotions. And I think stuff like that really set me up for failure because I didn't have the coping mechanisms other than turn it off, don't deal with it. I really think some good can come out of my journey. I think if I can stand up and explain what happened to me, then people can learn from my experience. And in that regard, the next person who goes through it gets better help or people get help before they get to the point where I was. For me, it's really important to get back to work. I have a, a feeling of a worth that goes along with that, that you know, you're accomplishing something, that you're doing something. I don't want PTSD to define me. I don't want to be a victim of something forever. I want to move that mountain. I want to figure out how to live with it and move on. Kenny and I had been married for 23 years and we have three children. And one day in 2008, he dropped dead. I mean, there was no sort of warning, no predictors. He was there one minute and he was gone. My youngest daughter, Aislinn, sat me down and said, Mom, I'm really scared. I'm really worried about you and I don't think you're okay. And I kind of looked at her and I said, oh no, I'm here to look after you. I'm your mom, I'm okay. I'm an occupational health nurse. So I would know what she had asked me to do is see my doctor. And so I did make an appointment with the doctor and wow, was that ever important. Right away, she said, you're ill, right? You have depression and it's okay. And so I'm looking at her, listening to her. That's what I would sometimes say to an employee at work. And so I had to become more reasonable and say, you know what, just slow down. I have to enjoy life, what's left of it, and those children, and make sure that they feel confident that their mom is okay. And to feel joy again, I can remember explicitly the moment after the diagnosis and the treatment when I found myself feeling that first moment of joy in life. I was just astounded. I hadn't felt it for so long that when I felt it, it was amazing. And now I wait for it all the time. Last year, I found out that my heart it wasn't beating properly, so my heart would stop for three to five seconds at a time. And when I found, found that out, I started getting panic attacks, anxiety. Um, eventually, it got so bad where I couldn't leave my apartment, I couldn't go to work, I couldn't even go a, a block away to go grocery shopping. I started missing things like people's birthdays or just like going out for a bite, you just become used to that, and then you're getting more afraid to actually like leave. I would leave my apartment um, feeling okay sometimes, and two blocks away I would start to feel anxious, I would start to overthink, um, am I gonna make it to work? And then just walking to work all of a sudden, the freeze, I would freeze up two blocks away then I would just go into a full-blown panic attack and I couldn't move. I was like paralyzed, basically. The heart starts pumping, you know, your palms get really sweaty. Your legs start to like feel like they're gonna give out. You can't breathe. Um, so yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it would feel like forever. When you're having a panic attack, it feels like it's lasting for like half an hour, even though it's only gonna probably last for about five minutes. 
something bad's gonna happen to me. It's always like that feeling of, uh, like, am I gonna wake up and someone's gonna be picking me off, you know, the sidewalk? Or am I gonna wake up, am I gonna be in the hospital? I think it's because I've passed out before and ended up in the hospital. I think that's like, just, ugh, that experience really freaks me. It got so bad, so I would start calling people or I would text somebody to kind of like feel calm. Um, it didn't always work because if nobody answers their phone, <laughs> you're kind of stuck. Uh, and then I'd have to like turn around and come back home to help with the stress and anxiety. I started doing yoga and that's helped me with breathing. And I think that's a really big thing, you know, and a stress reliever. It's made even walking to work, just being at work a lot easier. I think I was just more stressed out about letting other people down and I didn't want to burden anybody. They have no idea what you're talking about, which is better now, like people are starting to talk about it more. And the more I talked about it, the more I found other people kind of came out and said, oh, I, I deal with it too, and nobody talks about it. So yeah, it has been a really easy in the last year to get it out. When I was really struggling at work, one thing that did help was having a buddy at work and being able to just share with that person maybe how I was doing that day. And it was someone who would look out for me a little bit. And it's kind of like I knew that that person had my back. Now that person wasn't working with me every day, but when that person was around, I thought, oh, this is cool, this is good. And I can uh, look forward to when that person will be there so that I can have someone who I know does care about me. My energy was kind of all used up just commuting to work. But as I come to work, I sit on my desk, I sit in my chair and I focus myself. I bring that focus to calm myself. So I take about a couple of minutes, take deep breath, again bring my yoga, breathing here. I say a prayer and I start my computer, and that's how I start my day. A daily practice of relaxation. So what that meant was, and my therapist had given me this 10 minute tape to listen to every day, and it was just deep breathing for five minutes, and even as my hands are moving up and down, I can already feel I'm relaxing, then progressive muscle relaxation. So it was 10 minutes a day, and what it did was it brought that everyday level of anxiety just sort of down to more of a level of calm and it was really helpful. Sometimes what helps is uh, when I, I take breaks in the day so that if I notice that my anxiety levels are rising what I can do is change the environment and uh, perhaps leave the space where I'm working, go for a walk, get some fresh air, uh, sometimes if there's not enough time to do that, perhaps I'm, I'm working to a deadline, I can still change my environment. I can stand up. And even just that physical movement, taking some deep breaths, can help to change my perspective enough so that I can get my work done. So I bring all this routine in my day-to-day -day work also. I take uh, some time off to go for these classes so I can handle my work in a good way. I feel uh, more energetic. I feel my concentration level is very good. So bringing all these self-care tools in my uh, routine helps me get focused at my work. What I do today is I talk to my manager about what my needs are. And something that happened when I was at a new workplace, I had a new manager, and I was very agitated when it came to performance review time. Um, and it's nerve-wracking for everybody, but for me it was a heightened response. I was extremely agitated around it, full of fear. And what I did was I spoke to my manager about those very specific fears and my very specific reaction. And we were able to come to 
resolution and solutions together about what can meet my manager's need for um, filling out the forms and doing all of the administration, but meet my need for security and ease and comfort. I think the most important thing that I do to ensure that I stay on a level path and continue to go forward and not back is to be very self-aware and to not be so hard on myself. Um, I make sure that I take my medication. I've tried a few times thinking that I was fine to go off or to lower it, and that's a huge mistake. Now my, my opinion is if it's not broken, don't fix it. So um, I use a sun lamp, the SAD lamp in the wintertime, and I take vitamin D. I found that's been really helpful. Um, if I start to feel flat, I make sure I get out. I call a friend and I go for coffee, or I do window shopping. Um, or I go to a bookstore. I don't allow myself to sit and go through that. Call a friend or um, go out for a walk. Because for me, for some reason, going outside just, boom, clears my head and I feel, just stepping out the door, I feel so much better so, many t so, so much of the time. I, I lost a lot of weight at the time that I was dealing with it. And uh, that in and of itself makes you feel a whole lot better. You have more energy, you just uh, you feel better. It's kind of like a uh, catch-22. If, if you're not in good shape, it's easier to be down. If you're down, it's hard to exercise. So, um, so I try to do that. I do meditation, which has been really helpful. Um, I'm, I'm speaking about the illness, which gives me a real sense of, uh, of you know, part of it and, and acceptance of it. I also take uh, my dogs for a walk quite often. Uh, my wife and I have started going to meditation classes, so that's helping as well. And uh, I'm working on becoming more open with my wife to involve her more in my life so she knows what's going on as well. For myself, it's just taking the time to listen. So I sit quietly for 20 minutes, and that's how I start my day. I listen to myself, and I relax myself in such a way that if I don't do that, I won't start my day properly. I try to um, not wear black all the time. Now, it used to be I used to wear black t-shirt and black pants all the time. Now I try and, and, and put color into my world. Um, I try and enjoy the simple moments like a hot coffee. That's what I do. So what I do is I often go home and take the big binder I have from all my classes and I read it. And uh, even if a lot of what I'm reading is simply stuff about, you know, that helps my self-esteem or my self-confidence or things of that nature. Um, so I do that. Uh, my wife and I talk. Um, and then I just try to get better organized at work. Uh, um, I can tell when I am down a bit, I'll realize that my office has got files everywhere. So I got to get, I got to get managed. So I, uh, I, um, put together a, a list of what I have to manage, a timetable, so that the files are kept filed. And I go and get them when I need them. And it's amazing how much easier it is when you look at an office and it looks organized and it looks clean as opposed to, oh man, where do I start? On the day I would wake up and I'll be so tired and my focus will be kind of, uh, all these memories coming back to me. And as I go for my yoga or I go for Reiki, I bring back that stability in my day-to-day uh, -day routine. So exercise, walking, doing voluntary work, it really helps me, it, uh, it, it inspires me inside.